On the 21st of June, Leading Edge Materials dropped their second uh, quarterly report for their fiscal year. And joining me is new CEO, Kurt Budge. Welcome. Thank you. So I think we'll begin with you. You are the new CEO of Leading Edge Material and uh, stepping up as uh, Erik Kraft is. I think he's still in the board. You have to correct me there if I'm wrong. But could you uh, give us a short background uh, to you? Yeah, Eric is still a director and a major shareholder. I joined Leading Edge Materials on the 19th of May. I've spent 30 years plus in the mining sector in a variety of different roles, working in mining companies, private equity and capital markets. And for the last the last role I had was for eight and a half years as CEO of Beowulf Mining, which might be very familiar to investors in Sweden. Beowulf was developing the Kallak Iron Ore project, and uh, we had a listing in Stockholm and in London. Mm. So very familiar with uh, working in Sweden. Indeed. Could you tell us uh, more about your time with Beowulf Mining and how you expect that experience to carry over now that you work with uh, Leading Edge Materials? Well, I think uh, Swedish mining sector is a very exciting place to be. Um, I've always uh, found my peers to be um, you know, incredibly capable and forward looking. I think it's one of the most innovative sectors you could possibly want to work in. So eight and a half years, I'm I, again, I'm sure many, many investors who watch the uh, financial markets in Sweden are familiar with uh, the saga of Beowulf trying to get uh, an exploitation concession for its Kallik Iron Ore project, which uh, we were successful in getting in uh, early 2022. It took seven and a half years to get it. So I think you could you can assume from that that I'm very familiar with some of the challenges around getting mining projects permitted. And uh, but that process enabled me to, you know, I, I know a lot of people. I'm ver very familiar with the industry and. Uh, you know, great experience in how you get things done. So I think coming to leading edge specifically around the Nora share project. Uh, and we're at that stage now where we're looking to get the exploitation concession that uh, my experience is very relevant to the stage of development to the, the company that we're with we are where we are. We're of course going to talk about Nora Share, but I want to begin with the more general outlook uh, as we can read it in the report. You mentioned the Crucial Raw Materials Act adopted by the European Council, uh, among other things. And this requires uh, member states to have uh, national explor exploration plans. Could you tell us more about this? Yes, yeah, the Critical Raw Materials Act, which came out earlier this year, is uh, a really important piece of legislation and something that's really been missing um in in the natural resources space so critical raw materials those those materials that uh, are of economic economic importance the eu uh, at high risk of supply disruption and for leading edge that's we've got rare earth elements graphite and cobalt in the portfolio which are all critical and then we've also got nickel which is strategic so really what the eu is looking to do is to uh, ensure that he has access to those raw materials which are essential to um, achieving the obje objectives around the green transition, um, climate, climate change objectives, and, and also around digital objectives by 2030. So very important act, uh, and it will mean a lot for our business. Can you give us some practical examples of how this can come and contribute to the projects currently undergoing in Leading Edge? So my focus, uh, one of my focus areas at the moment is around making an application for a strategic project status for Nora Share, our rare earths uh, elements project. If, if we are successful in getting that strategic project designation, what that does is it introduces specific time limits on permitting processes and, and that's 27 months for an extraction project. Um, that's something that has been completely absent from permitting uh, for mining projects, it, you know, in my experience. There's been a, a real lack of predictability about when you will get uh, a permit for a particular project. And, and what investors need is they need predictability and they need some certainty of outcomes. 
Um, and it's very important also for stakeholders involved in a project. It builds momentum. If, if everybody knows that decisions are gonna made in a, in a proper time frame. So that's one tick in the box really um, around predictability about when you'll get a permit uh, given that you've, you've provided all the right information. But secondly, there's also the, um, the potential that it makes finance easier to access. Um, and also in terms of the EU trying to put together resilient and robust supply chains, it's not just a case of having a mine or having a downstream uh, facility, but actually put, joining up, making all the linkages. Um, you know, what's intended is that there'll be a matchmaking with regards to offtakes as well. So all these together are real driving forces behind actually bringing projects to fruition. Hmm. So Nora Scher on the top of the priority list then, but what of your other projects, Voxna and Bihor Sud, uh, will these also uh, contribute by the uh, the uh, the act? Yeah, well, we're, we're quite fortunate because, you know, critical raw materials also includes natural graphite. And, and it's not just a case of uh, strategic project status only being for mines. You can actually um, apply for projects at different points in the supply chain. So with some, with, with Voxna, for example, our, our graphite mine, uh, we have the opportunity to consider whether or not we make an application for the anode materials plant that we published a PEA uh, preliminary economic assessment several years ago. So that's that's an interesting development for us to consider. You know, you've got to do one at a time and, and, and make sure you get the Nora Share application um, right. But then we can also consider uh, the opportunities for Voxner and then nickel, uh, sorry, cobalt is on the critical raw materials list and nickel is on the strategic raw materials list. So with Bihor Sud, you know, you've also got one uh, couple of uh, metals there which are very important to the EU. And all the expectation for the EU is around um, base metals, battery metals, rare earth elements, the demand for those materials uh, growing exponentially. So I don't think it's a case when the EU is looking at projects that it's just going to pick one or two. It wants options. And uh, you can't, when you, when you actually need a mine, you can't just turn the tap and switch it on. So as much uh, activity and innovation that the EU can stimulate in the sector, um, this is a good thing and it gives us as a company lots of opportunities. Hmm. And you're continuing to explore potential reserves in the Bihor Sud uh, and you've uh, found what you call extensive mineralizations of zinc, lead and silver in the G2 area of the project, uh, silver especially in the G7. How does this change your uh, sort of expectations of the project? Well, Romania is new to me. It's not a jurisdiction I've worked in before. I think what coming new to this particular project um, what's most exciting is that we have access to underground development and we put in the latest uh, announcement that we just G2, we have 8,000 uh, 8 kilometers of uh, underground uh, galleries that we already have access to. Uh, and what the Romania team has been doing is going through each of these underground developments and making sure they're safe for working. And then once they're safe for working, actually getting there and, and what that's enabling the team to do is actually visibly see mineralization, be able to, you know, in the past we're using XRF to take grade information just by putting the instrument against the wall, but also rock and chip samples to understand uh, what the grade of material is. And, and really in this next phase of work, having access to all these galleries now, we're able to get underground to do some drilling and to really paint the picture for investors because what we're seeing is and what we've reported in the past is you know high grade results for especially for cobalt nickel um uh, but also the opportunity of a much larger polymetallic uh, system and what we need to do now is to basically intercept more mineralization with our drilling um, get the grade reported on that mineralization and then also provide investors with some idea of scale. Uh, and once we've got that, you know, if we've got the opportunity to actually put a resource figure on the deposit, 
uh, well, a deposit, and and then come up with a plan as how we might develop that into a mine. Hmm. But what we have, which you don't have very often, is you've got all this underground development. So, you know, in my in my world, you're straight into the heart of what could be a deposit, rather than trying to figure out from surface what it is you might have through, you know, uh, surface outcrop, geochemical or geophysical techniques. So yeah, we very excited about what the rest of this year and the beginning of next year can hold for Bihor Sud. Hmm. And is this the G2 and the G7 areas or are you also doing this with other areas? I mean, there is so much to go at. This is this is the challenge. Um, and we are, what we announced recently is that we're going to start our drilling in G7 with a 1500 meter program. And then we're going to move from focusing on the nic uh, cobalt nickel to the polymetallic mineralization. So to the zinc, lead, uh, silver, copper um, that we've reported, uh, that's in G7 and uh, a much larger program for G7. Kurt Budge, CEO of Leading Edge Materials, thank you very much for being here and answering our questions. Thanks very much indeed.